the scariest verse in the Bible. The Bible offers us several warnings about our actions and future events that will take place. However, there is a verse that many have dubbed the scariest verse in the Bible. Matthew 7 verse 23 And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you are banished from my presence, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. Jesus' most famous message, the Sermon on the Mount, focused on the hearts of his listeners. He targeted his disciples as the audience. We have here the conclusion of this long and excellent sermon, the scope of which is to show the vital need of obedience to the commands of Christ. If he had wanted recognition from people, he would have considered it sufficient. However, something more is necessary. Through a simple explanation, he emphasizes that simply professing one's religious beliefs outwardly, no matter how impressive, is insufficient to gain entry to heaven. Something else is important. All judgment is committed to our Lord Jesus. The keys are put into his hand. He has power to prescribe new terms of life and death and to judge men according to them. Now this is a solemn declaration pursuant to that power. Observe here, one, Christ's law laid down, Matthew 7 verse 21. Who shall sojourn in thy tabernacle? Christ here shows, first, that it will not suffice to say, Lord, Lord. We should acknowledge Christ as our master in our words and actions, making sure our addresses and professions align with this belief. When we pray to God or converse with others, we commonly refer to Christ as Lord, which is appropriate since He is our Lord. However, it is not enough to simply use this term as a formality and expect it to grant us entry into heaven. God knows our hearts and desires true substance, not just outward shows of respect. Men often exchange compliments, but these are just polite gestures and not real acts of service. Therefore, they cannot be considered as valuable in the eyes of Christ. While it may seem persistent to repeatedly ask for something in prayer, it is meaningless if our inner thoughts and feelings do not align with our outward words. In such cases, we are no more than a noisy instrument without any real purpose. We read the context in Matthew 7 verse 22 Amplified Bible. Many will say to me on this day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and driven out demons in your name, and done many miracles in your name? The plea is supposed to be in that day, that great day. Every person will reveal their true nature. All hidden thoughts and motivations, including the false beliefs that sinners currently cling to, will be exposed for all to see. It is clear that their cause is weak, despite their fervent belief in it. Their pleas will be futile. They plead with great urgency, invoking the name of the Lord and appealing to Christ's knowledge of their situation. However, their efforts will not succeed. We read that we have prophesied in thy name, Yes, it may be so. Balaam and Caiaphas were repealed to prophecy, and Saul was against his will among the prophets, yet that did not save them. It's important to note that a man can be a preacher, has talents for ministry, and a calling to it, and even achieve success in it, and yet be a wicked man. He may help others to heaven, and it's still possible for him to fall short himself. We also read, 
that in thy name we have cast out devils. That may be too. Judas cast out devils, and yet was the son of perdition. We read, that in thy name we have done many wonderful works. Gifts of tongues and healing would recommend men to the world, but it is real holiness or sanctification that is accepted of God. Grace and love are a more excellent way than removing mountains. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 2 Amplified Bible If we speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love for others growing out of God's love for me, then I have become only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, just an annoying distraction. And if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but do not love reaching out to others, I am nothing. Grace will bring a man to heaven without working miracles, but working miracles will never bring a man to heaven without grace. Observe, that which their heart was upon, it was in doing these works. They confided in these works and the wonderfulness of them. We must be careful not to rely solely on external privileges and performances as this may lead us to deceive ourselves and face eternal destruction, as many others have with false beliefs. As the judge pronounces the sentence, he will solemnly declare to them, I never knew you, so depart from me, you who commit inequity. Matthew 7 verse 21, Amplified Bible. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Observe why and upon what ground he rejects them and their plea. It is possible for individuals to have a reputation for piety, but still engage in inequitous behavior. In this case, those individuals were considered workers of inequity. Those who hide their immoral behavior behind a facade of respectability will ultimately suffer the consequences. He never did know them, for he always knew them to be hypocrites and rotten at heart, as he did Judas. Did Christ desire the presence of these guests? During this time on earth, he welcomed sinners, but when he returns in glory, he will cast them away. Christ only accepts those who serve him beyond a mere profession, and those who only have a bare profession will be acknowledged by him on the final day. It is a reminder that men can fall from great heights of hope into depths of misery. How they may go to hell by the gates of heaven. It is important to take this message seriously and reflect on one's beliefs and actions. He shows by a parable that hearing these sayings of Christ will not make us happy if we do not make conscience of doing them, but that if we hear them and do them, we are blessed in our deed. Matthew 7 verses 24 to 27 Amplified Bible So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man a far-sighted, practical, and sensible man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods and torrents came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish, stupid man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell, and the floods and torrents came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great and complete was its fall.
The hearers of Christ's word are here divided into two sorts, some that hear and do what they hear, others that hear and do not. Christ preached now to a mixed multitude, and he thus separates them one from the other, as he will at the great day when all nations shall be gathered before him. To hear Christ is not barely to give him hearing, but to obey him. Observe, it is not enough to hear Christ's sayings, understand them, hear them, remember them, hear them, and talk of them, repeat them, dispute for them, but we must hear and do them. This do, and thou shalt live. Luke 11 verse 28 But he said, on the contrary, Blessed, happy, favored by God are those who hear the word of God and continually observe it. John 13 verse 17 If you know these things, you are blessed, happy, and favored by God, if you put them into practice and faithfully do them. Matthew 12 verse 50 For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven by believing in me and following me is my brother and sister and mother. Those who only hear Christ's sayings and do not do them sit down in midway to heaven. The general scope of this parable teaches us that the only way to make sure work for our souls and eternity is to hear and do the sayings of the Lord Jesus. These sayings of his in this Sermon upon the Mount, which is wholly practical. Like Mary, when they hear the word of Christ, sit at his feet in subjection to it. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Our top priority should be to ensure our place in heaven. We must make sure that we will be welcomed into eternal dwellings when we face our final moments. Many never mind this. It is the furthest thing from their thoughts. They are building for this world, as if they were to be here always, but take no care to build for another world. Christ in us is so. We must ground our hopes of heaven upon the fullness of Christ's merit. There are many who profess that they hope to go to heaven, but despite this rock, many people make the mistake of placing their hopes on a foundation of sand.